Hey, fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. The way you learn how to juggle is by practicing. The way you do well on standardized tests is by practicing. So what we have today is we have the ASVAB preparation exam. This is just a trial exam to give you sample problems in automotive and shop information. I'd highly recommend you have a piece of paper out in front of you and a pencil. You pause the video, do the problem, unpause the video, and then check your work against my solution. In this video, we're gonna go over 15 automotive and shop information questions for the ASVAB test. You could get more information with this app right here. You could go online to find it, or you could get it at the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. Great resource, a lot more information, a lot more practice tests, and one-on-one -on -one tutoring if you need that. All right, let's get started. Question number one, the adhesive that is usually supplied in two parts, which must be mixed prior to use is glue, contact cement, silicone rubber, epoxy. Um, just out of knowledge, it has to be epoxy. Epoxy is always a two-part mixture. You mix them together and that's what gives you your bonding agent. So epoxy is an adhesive that is supplied in two parts. Question number two, what is the use of an anvil? Again, really, a lot of these are just vocabulary questions. To carve wood handles, to hold two pieces of glued wood together, to grind metal bearings, to, to shape hot metal. Correct answer is answer D, to shape hot metal. Anvil is a big block of steel a lot of blacksmith um, hammers on. You know it's going to either be wood or metal. And if you know anything about an anvil, even if you can't quite remember it, you can eliminate one or A and B because they're both about wood. Question three, when the clutch is engaged on a manual transmission, the clutch pedal will be down, up, halfway down, halfway up. Um, it's a little bit of a trick question. You know it can't be C or D because that's kind of where the clutch is burning. So you have to decide if it's up or down. It is actually up, whoops, it is actually up on a manual transmission. Uh, that's saying that the transmission is engaged, so the clutch is up. Question number four, if the universal joints are broken and the car is standing still, the car will A, not move when the engine is revved up, increase in speed, work as usual, become impossible to push. So just kind of reading through those answers, if you don't know a universal joint, the question is, are you gonna have drive to the wheels or not? Correct answer is answer A, not move when the engine is revved up. So the universal joint looks like this. If they're broken, there's gonna be no connection between the engine and the wheels. Number five, when a spark plug fires, it is part of the A, power stroke, B, exhaust stroke, C, intake, intake stroke, D, compression stroke. Correct answer, answer D, compression stroke. So once all that gas is in that cylinder, you push it super tight, you light it with the spark plug, it blows up and pushes that cylinder back. That is in a four stroke engine um, and then the exhaust stroke pushes all those gases out. Question number six. Most automobile engines are two-stroke, three-stroke, four-stroke, six-stroke. There's really only two types of engines. A two-stroke, like on a lot of dirt bikes, um, where the compression and exhaust are in a single stroke, and a four-stroke, like all vehicles. So the correct answer, answer C, four-stroke engine. Question number seven. There are four types of fuel injection used in cars today. They are throttle body injection, multi-port injection, direct injection, and a manual continuous electronic flow injection, sequential fuel injection, automatic circuitous injection, manual intermittent injection. Correct answer Answer B, 
sequential fuel injection. Sequential means in order. So as one cylinder gets injected, fires, then the next, fires, then the next, then the next. So they go in order. Again, a lot of this is really just vocabulary. Number eight, the piston of an internal combustion engine fits inside the crankshaft, cylinder, radiator, brake drum. So if you don't know what those words mean, um, it's a tough one, but a crankshaft is going to help drive the, the, the transmission. So the crankshaft is kind of the conversion from linear motion to the flywheel to the transmission. The cylinder is a piece inside the engine that the piston travels in. The radiator is a cooling system. And then the brake drum is a, a part in the wheel uh, to break the vehicle. So correct answer, answer B, cylinder. Question number nine, compared to a regular nail, a finishing nail has a larger head and larger diameter, larger head and smaller diameter, C, smaller head, smaller diameter, D, smaller head and larger diameter. Well, if it's for finishing, you're not going to want to see it, so it has to be smaller all the way around. There's only one correct answer up there. Answer C, smaller head, smaller diameter. So here's the finishing nail here. No head on it, so you could recess it into the wood, cover it up uh, with wood fill. Question number 10. Uncontrolled rapid drying of wood, talking about lumber, causes A, warping, harmless discoloration unless it's green, C, checking and cracking, D, an increase in wood strength. So if you ever had green wood and you left it out, you would know that the correct answer is C. It starts to shrink as that water leaves it, and then that leads to cracks in the wood. Question number 11. A, machine screws are A, only used for steel building construction, pretty exclusive. B, most often used for fastening metal parts securely together. C, used only for, used only with nut that has a correct diameter. D, used to cut threads and sheet metal. So even if you don't really know what a machine screw is for, answer B makes the most sense because it's not exclusive. Like A, well maybe they are used for steel building, but they're going to be used for a lot else. And then C and D you can eliminate. So correct answer, answer B. Question number 12, an Allen wrench, A, made exclusively by the Allen Manufacturing Company, B, fits all kinds of screws, C, fits screws with octagonal recess in the head, D, fits screws with a hexagon recess in the head. Correct answer is D, an Allen is a hex, six sides, um, and then they vary in different sizes. All right, we're moving right along here. Question 13, in arc welding, TIG stands for Turner Insertion Gas, Tungsten Inert Gas, Torch Inert Gas, Tin Impressible Galvis. It's really a vocab question as well. Correct answer is B, tungsten inert gas. You could have eliminated some of those answers uh, for not making sense. Question 14, a carpenter square is used for A, indicate if something is level. What's a square, not a level. B, indicate if something is vertical. C, draw lines at right angles to each other. D, draw lines at right angles to each other. I'm sorry, it says right angles, but it says 180, so that would be a straight angle. That's a typo, it would be straight angle. Well, a level checks level. A vertical, where well, you hold the level up, vertical, that's called plumb. So it has nothing to do with A and B. A square is designed to draw a right angle. So the correct answer for 14 is C, drawing right angles. Problem 15. 
Uh, before I do this last one here, if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. Share this video with anybody else you know who's taking the ASVAB mechanical test. A little bit of studying up front really goes a long way. Um, so just keep studying, keep working on it. The more you kind of jot stuff down, the better it sticks in your head. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Okay, question 15, to fuse metals, gas welding uses oxygen and acetylene to produce a flame, B, oxygen and fluorine, C, nitrogen and acetylene, flux and acetylene. Well, I could see that acetylene is in three of the four, so it's probably gonna be acetylene if you don't know. And then oxygen burns really well. So the only one that makes sense really is answer A, oxygen and acetylene. A lot of these problems are really just about vocab. Uh, being around a shop really helps a lot. But reviewing a lot of these words will help as well. So if you want any more resources, you can find them on this webpage right here, asvab-tutoring.com. Or you could also get them at the Apple App Store or Google Play. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.